big game eight between Harlequins and Gloucester was sure to be a Christmas cracker at Twickenham, and it didn't disappoint. After Billy Twelvetrees had gone close for the Cherry and Whites just five minutes in, it would be second row Jeremy Thrush to open the scoring for them, the New Zealander just able to steal in ahead of Jack Clifford. Mick Evans responded for Quinns with a penalty before they were able to take the lead. Nick Easter getting the hosts up to the line before the ball was shipped out wide and the grateful recipient was England wing Marlon Yard. A Gloucester penalty hauled David Humphrey's side back into the lead before the first of many Harlequins mistakes at the breakdown gifted the visitors their second try. James Hook on hand to canter in for the score. The next try of the game was less easy on the eye but just as effective with the Quinns pack working the ball forward inch by inch, scrum half Danny Kerr eventually saw the smallest of gaps to dive through and took his chance well to get his side back in it just before half-time. With seven minutes gone in the second half, it looked as though Conor O'Shea's side were going ahead once again, but another basic handling error cost his side, with a combination of a Dave Ward pass and a Clifford fumble, presenting Henry Trinder with the opportunity to run in from 80 metres, and the Gloucester flyer was never going to pass up on an opportunity like that. Harlequins again responded with more strong work from the forwards, allowing Easter to burrow over. And next came perhaps the try of the game, and perhaps one of the tries of the season. The signing of Jamie Roberts to Harlequins has been much talked about, and from his role in this score, you can see why. The big Welsh centre produced a magnificent break to feed Mike Brown, whose clever hands found substitute Ross Chisholm to run in and take the glory. And more importantly for Quinns, it meant following an Evans conversion, they now led 29-24. Once again, though, Quinns were pegged back by their own inaccuracy. A stray pass from Kerr fed Trinder for his second score of the game, although the centre looked to have done himself some serious damage in the process. Hook thought he'd put Gloucester into a commanding lead, only to be denied by a knock-on from Charlie Sharples. Rob Cook then looked to match the quality of the Chisholm try earlier with a scintillating score of his own, running the ball back from a loose kick from his opposite number, Brown, and beating seemingly everyone before just having enough to reach the line for the score. The conversion that followed meant Gloucester now led 39-29, and Evans' penalty reduced the arrears to just seven, and Quinns would then grind out yet another score, with Gloucester down to 14, thanks to the sim bidding of Richard Hibbard. Chisholm again on hand to dock down for the hosts, Evans holding his nerve from out wide to level things up. It was all set for a grandstand finish to big game eight then, and what a finish it would have been for the organisers had Nick Evans been able to slot over a drop goal at the death. It wasn't to be, though. The scores finished level in a truly fascinating encounter and one that is sure to live long in the memory. 39 all, the final score from Twickenham.